Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here Tuesday now, the 19th of September, 2023. On the update today, we're going to talk about what is happening with this system off the southeastern coast. Of course, we do have Nigel out there and probably another system that is going to try to develop once it moves off Africa out into the tropical Atlantic. The very busy hurricane season is going to continue, but this area that I have sort of cropped and made into today's thumbnail and title card definitely warrants some interest because it could create quite the ruckus this weekend along the southeastern coast and there's going to be some debate as to what it's classified as non-tropical, subtropical, tropical labels, labels, labels. Maybe that should have been the title of today's update. That could be the subtitle. Well, let's get on with it, shall we? And I'll show you what we're even talking about. First of all, check out the wide shot here, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. Now, you got to admit, that is a beautiful looking hurricane out over the open Atlantic. As long as any shipping interests avoid it, you can marvel at the spectacle of what is happening there. Wow, pretty cool. That's Hurricane Nigel, a nice big eye. And, uh, I mean, it just doesn't get too much prettier than that, especially when it's far out in the open Atlantic. Uh, Nigel will send swells out. It's been doing so. Those swells will, of course, impact land areas. But otherwise, it's just doing what hurricanes do, moving heat from the tropics elsewhere, redistributing it. And uh, just a really neat-looking shot here. This is what it looks like close up. And uh, there's Bermuda for context and geographic placement, so no worries for Bermuda. But the swells that will come out, those will impact the beaches of Bermuda, depending on which way they face over the coming days. And eventually those swells could make it over to the east coast of the United States and elsewhere. So just keep an eye on that. You know the drill. You are much better, for me, alive and well than not. All right, so we got to keep you safe no matter what the hazards are. The next area we're going to start watching is down here. And look at what has happened. We've got this front draped across the area, and that becomes the focusing mechanism for low pressure to try to, de to develop along this front in the next few days. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. Meanwhile, out in the eastern Atlantic, look, there's some dry air and dust coming off Africa. You see that dust plume right there coming off. And, uh, yeah, that even happens here late into the hurricane season. Look at this surge of air coming. You can even see the edge of it right there. These high-resolution satellite animations are really remarkable. But in here, we do have energy. In fact, it looks like it's right about there. And that energy is going to come off and try to develop into another system. Whether or not this gets named the O-Storm, which would be Ophelia, and then this would be the P-Storm, which I think is Philippe this year, if I'm not mistaken, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. We might have another couple of names scratched off the list in the coming days. All right, uh, National Hurricane Center homepage, there is Nigel, and uh, the winds are 90 miles per hour, 975 on the pressure. Not going to make it to major hurricane status. It does not appear, and that's fine. I mean, it's boosting the ACE score nevertheless, and again, only of interest to shipping lanes in the North Atlantic. Now, real quick, Nigel, we don't want to ignore the fact that it will move rapidly into the North Atlantic here. There was some concern that it might impact parts of the United Kingdom. It'll become post-tropical up in this area, colder Atlantic waters. Its energy will spread out over a larger area, but it's going to be around for a few more days and then take all that energy up into the high latitudes, the northern latitudes of the Atlantic. And if we look at the seven-day outlook, there's our system, and it says right there, non-tropical area of low pressure is expected to form east of the Florida Peninsula late this week. It could acquire some subtropical characteristics. We'll talk about what that means. But the main thing that you need to take away from this is the regardless part. Regardless of subtropical development, and I might add just real quick, remember I say I like to talk to you, not just at you, regardless of what us mere mortals call it, there will be impacts. Gusty winds, maybe some overwash, some onshore flow, creating some coastal flooding, bands of heavy rain. Not a good weekend to do coastal things, and that is the bottom line. Now, what those impacts are in terms of the severity, we don't know yet. 
because there is a chance with the warm water that is there that this could generate more deep thunderstorm activity and resemble more of a tropical system kind of leaning in that direction more concentrated more wind and the the just the overall bundling of the energy closer to the center that makes it more tropical in nature not all the way over on that side of the spectrum but not just a pure sort of mid-latitude storm either a non-tropical storm somewhere in the middle that needle we need a graphic that kind of shows that that'd be cool maybe we'll work on that one day so that's that then we've got this other system out here that's going to come off and it'll probably develop the euro and other models pretty enthusiastic about it the gfs is not real sure who knows right but we have plenty of time to watch it nothing to worry about in the near term now one thing that i'm curious about once we get our system out here in the atlantic there water temperatures right up against the coast at about 80 degrees 26 celsius but offshore and into the gulf stream mid 80s or 29 and 30 celsius 28 29 30 so the water temperature profile all along where this system is going to be as long as it stays offshore very warm and pretty wide overall as well there's 27 celsius that's 81 so i am just going to go out on a limb and say do not be surprised if this is a little stronger than people are probably thinking or talking about we just don't know sometimes these systems can be surprising even in 2023 right of course they can that's not a, the same as, oh, Mark is saying it's going to, no, 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 don't, don't mistake what I'm saying. Just pay attention to it and don't be shocked if it is a little bit more beefy than we're thinking right now. It hasn't even formed yet, but the water temperatures are definitely there. That one ingredient, the very warm water to generate that deep thunderstorm activity to make it more potent, that ingredient is there. So let's not forget that, all right? And of course, the let's make that larger, shall we? The water temperatures over here are warmer than average. Not out here. This is all the damage done, if you want to call it that, from Franklin and Lee. And this, of course, is Nigel. And then if we talked about this the other day. The rest of the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean and Gulf, very, very warm relative to average. But our system over here will have slightly warmer than normal water temperatures to work with. And those water temperatures, as I showed you, in the mid to upper 80s Fahrenheit. So that part is there. We will be watching this. I talked about this yesterday. Let's use white to make it pop better. There is some energy starting to congeal just a little bit. Otherwise, the vorticity is stretched out over thousands of miles. We need to just see what happens right here. And we'll watch this. In fact, I'm going to save this image. I'm just going to leave this tab up. And we'll compare yesterday, um, it'll be yesterday once we get to tomorrow. We'll compare tomorrow to today. How about that? And I'll show you how this evolves. But that's the key. Let's see how much this starts to bundle. And if it looks more round, even kind of like this. I know this is more oval shaped. Uh, that's a hurricane there, of course. That is Nigel. But let's see. Let's see how that energy starts to bundle. At least the first foundation piece is there with the energy, the vorticity, as we call it, stretched out over those very warm waters. Now, the GFS from the Z, uh, 12Z run today, 12Z today, 850 millibars, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. There's that energy. Can't see it because I drew it with white. Try again. There's the energy there, stretched out over a large area. That is, of course, what it looks like when the energy bundles up nicely. That, of course, is Nigel. So let's move this out into the future. Watch what happens. There's 24 hours, so Wednesday morning. By Thursday morning, we start to see some of that energy taking shape now, getting a little bit more curvature to these wind barbs in here. The air is piling up. We call that convergence. It's coming together. So that finally, later in the day, Thursday into Friday, on the GFS here, it starts to take shape so that Friday afternoon, pretty windy, squally, rainy, you name it, and then the GFS brings this ashore in the Carolinas there, not far from Jacksonville, North Carolina, south and west of Cape Lookout, across eastern North Carolina, and then off it goes, right? Well, that's just what this particular model shows. And just to see how it evolves, that's 5,000 feet up. Let's see what it looks like down at the surface. What kind of winds are we expecting? And at least on this particular run, 
So there we are, uh, Friday morning, and not too much. Those greens in there, that's, you know, 34 knots. You know, that's tropical storm force. And so, yes, the outer banks over here uh, and down to Cape Fear, Cape Lookout, just offshore of Myrtle Beach area, pretty gusty. And if that occurs during a few high tide cycles, we could get some problems along the North Carolina Outer Banks. But look how this evolves, and then the system goes on up into the northeast. So let's just watch and see, because it is going to be sitting over that very warm water. Didn't mean to do the sounding. Go away. That very warm water that's right in here. And you just never know. That's enough time for deeper thunderstorms to develop and for it to become more concentrated. Now the Euro, also at the same time frame, 18, I'm sorry, slow down Mark, 12Z, 850 millibars, and this is what it is showing, and we can look at this in 24 hour increments, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday, Saturday. Now to me this is interesting because it hangs back over here Saturday, whereas the GFS, if we just clear, clear the board real quick, if I can do it, come on Telestrator, so the GFS on Saturday, let's look at the same thing, shall we? We shall. Uh, so Saturday afternoon, morning, there it is. So Saturday morning, GFS, Saturday morning, Euro. That's a big difference in terms of where it is located. I think we could all agree to that. And this is a little bit more potent looking than the GFS has. And you see the energy is kind of stretched out. So this is going to be a hard one to figure out. It really is. But... Even looking here on the Euro, some of these height lines up here, that shows me that there could be some pretty stiff onshore flow. And that is the bottom line. Going back to that, impacts. Onshore flow, stiff northeast to east breezes, maybe even tropical storm force, 30, 40, 45 miles per hour, constantly we call that a fetch. That onshore fetch there, the flow piling up the water, eastern North Carolina, uh, eastern parts of South Carolina, the Pamlico Sound, the Albemarle, the Noose River. I know these areas very well because this is where I live, up into the tidewater of Virginia and maybe north from there. We'll just have to see. But onshore flow, rough conditions, maybe some ocean overwash, especially after what we just had with Lee chewing away at those dunes a little bit. We just need to pay attention, not expecting a major disaster or anything but it could be problematic and disruptive, especially since people do probably want to go to the beach over the coming days, right? Right. All right, spreading it out to the wide shot here. I just want to show you out to the next 10 days on the Euro. Watch what happens. This is every 24 hours. Our system there finally hanging off Cape Lookout area on Sunday. And then this next feature tries to get going out here in the deep tropics and of course that's five days six days seven days eight nine ten not much else happening this system out here in the open Atlantic surprise surprise and that gets us towards the end of the month just a rare peak out into the 10 day time frame just to kind of show you how things evolve over the next 10 days all right so we'll watch this I'll be on top of it it's in my backyard so of course if there's impacts for me to cover I'll go out and cover them. Most likely, New Bern, that area, I know that area very well. The Noose River there floods down at Union Point. If the wind is stiff enough for long enough, and of course the Outer Banks, especially Rodanthe, and any areas where you get that onshore flow. But we'll see what happens as this evolves. Still a couple of days away, still a few questions, obviously. And then that one caveat there, will that very warm water lead to a more bundled slightly more potent system, hopefully not more than that. Questions I don't have the answers to yet, so we'll figure it out together. All right? Have yourselves a great rest of your Tuesday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day from all of us at Hurricane Track. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.